The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Good day. How are you today? This is Patty Hunter, and we're on the show Patty's Page. Today, my wonderful guests are Miu Mient and Tiha Chi. Yes. Well, you know something? I'm glad I have uh, as you as a guest again because it's been such a long time since I've seen you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We've been oh, seeing it's since been about 2010, yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, that was a long time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, um, you both are from, oh, we're from uh, the country that was formerly known as Burma, and it's called, now called Myanmar. Yes. Myanmar. Why did they change it? What's that mean in English? You go ahead. So the, the, after 1980, April democracy uprising were cracked down by the Burmese military regimes. Yeah. They changed everything, country uh -huh. names and cities names and towns names, except the political system. Oh my goodness. So the, our country was known by the people as Burmese, mm -hmm. and they changed from Burmese to Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Myanmar has a no specific um, sense, some people say, but and they define Myanmar has uh, some specific meaning and definitions. Myanmar is very quick, fast. Yeah. Swift. Ma yeah. is very strong. Oh. Uh, are they still the same as they were? Yeah, they use that name. So they haven't changed politically. They're still the same, even though they say they're different, but they they really aren't really. Yeah. <laughs> so the, you can say the, the but they say that um, they are they are making our country as a, a democratic society. And they changing now. We making the democratizing the country, yeah. but actually there are a lot of you know the operations. You know, the operations mean the religious or, you know, the uh, freedom of expression or so right. you know, politically or economic or race or something. There are a lot of They're operations. No, no. let me uh, okay. edit okay. something. So, as he mentioned, after 1988, People's Uprising, they changed the country name without the consensus of the people. Right. Without oh. referendum. Right. And then I believe... The, the, with the advice of the astrologer, those top generals, when they make decision, right. they always rely on the astrologers. Yeah. So because of that advice, I believe they changed the na name of the country. If, if they like the, if they change, the, you know, if they after they before they changing, they getting the you know people well uh, desireness mm -hmm. and people you know willingness. Mm -hmm like the referendum, yes. the people agree they, they can change their country mm. names at whatever they like. So, so um, Miu, um, you are known for your story, uh, which was uh, Burma Soldier, Burma Soldier which was shown yeah. all, all over the world, right? Yeah. And uh, your uh, family, are they, some of them still in uh, Myanmar? Yeah, the, so the after the documentary film about my life coming yeah. out, and then the Burmese military regime threatened three of my siblings who left behind in Burma. Uh, the, just the three left? Yeah, three. The, my eldest brother and two of my eldest sister. Mm. That time then they were in Burma. Where are they now? Now, the, the, after the, this movie coming out, government threatened them to arrest. Uh -uh. So they didn't dare to stay inside Burma. Finally, they made up their mind to fly from Burma to Thailand. Yeah. So in 2011, um, they, they fled from Burma to Thailand and took refuge, one of the nine refugee camps along the Thai-Burma border. Since then, they have been staying in refugee camps. Are they still there? Yeah, they stay there. Well, how are we going to get them out? I no no the I have no idea but and then some contacts from the State Department yeah and then they say and that they will try to 
bring them to get here to have us for the family reunification. Yes, well, you can sponsor them. I, mean, I don't know why they're not allowing them to leave. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Uh, Tiha. Yes. Both of you, you and Miu, have a show called Golden Moon. And why do you have that show here? Are you helping people, the community, what? Uh, we, j we would like to share the information to our fellow Burmese. What's happening? Uh, people from Burma who arrived to the United States as a refugee. Right. And then my close friend, Think Koko from Washington, D.C. Right. He, at the time, he was working for the uh, Voice of uh, BBC and Voice of America, Voice of America. Mm -hmm. So he, he, uh, he talked to us whether is there any okay that we can start a TV program for the community. Mm. So me, Think Koko, and you, we started that TV program on July 15, 2010. That's four years ago. Almost yes, four yeah. years ago. Yes. Um, you think with your Golden Moon sh TV show, you can be able to try to get influence, influencing the people here in Fort Wayne to help your cause, help get your family out, Mew? Do you know anyone here in Fort Wayne that can be able to help you? Maybe we can get someone. Uh, here to contact them and maybe no, I don't think know? so. The the, good, the the our intentions and you know the main um, aims to found and set up the um, Golden Moon TV program is to share information yeah, among yeah. the Burmese people who live in Fort Wayne. Oh yeah, and then so this is apart from the my sibling situations and yeah. it, it cannot support to the my sibling situation. But now these um, talk show talk show you know the uh, well uh, you know the um, after people, you know, uh, listening or watching the talk show, they have the awareness about that. This is my whole <coughs> expectation. Because there's a lot of people in that refugee camps that need to get out, and um, I understand that Thailand, for a little while, want to send them back to Burma. No, the no, no the because and then stay, allow the nine refugee camps, allow the Thai Burma border. There are 150,000 of the Burmese people who took refuge, uh -oh. but mostly Thai people, Thai government denied to register them as a refugees. Without registration process, and uh, no refugee can come any country, can go out any country. So now the gov Thai government stopped the refugee registration process. Well, wow. Well, these the people are in no man's land then. They sure, you know. like the Diha and I, we used to be the kind of the person who has no man land. Right. We have the country less people. Mm -hmm. We have. <laughs> we gotta get them over here. You know. <coughs> excuse me. I left for my country in 1988 December, mm -hmm. and the first I was in India, and then after that I was in Thailand, mm -hmm. and I, in 1990 I became a person of concern of uh, UNHCR, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugee Service. Right. And then what happened was, there are other person of concern from Afghanistan and Iran, and including Burmese. Right. The Thai police, the Thai authorities arrested only Burmese people. Awesome. They not arrest Afghanistan or Iranian person of concern of UNHCR. That's very different. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so the, to be understand the refugee process, it is very co complicated mm. and very hurt for the other people outside the Burma and outside mm. the Thailand. So, um, is there anyone in the United States that you can, like a senator or anyone in in Indiana, that you can be able to communicate? Have you tried communicating with the senators here? And all? I bet you have. Yeah, the the when I was in Washington D.C. many times, I yes. used to go there. The the I met the some two senators and one congressman, Marlon Stassman, now who were elected again. Yeah, who is elected again? So the I explained them about the situations of the my siblings, not only my siblings, but, but also all of the Burmese refugees right. inside there in refugee camps. Yeah, because and there is no hopes to come to go to uh, to resettle, settle down there, rest for the uh, rest of the their life to the third country. So, but I asked, uh, you know, the State Department and then the Barack Obama administrations, mm. how to solve this problem. And 
have they come up with anything at all for you, or no? They say they, they were tried. They say the hands are tied, so or no? No, they say they were tried. But in the last year, the U.S. government and all the refugee prog uh, program yeah. for the Burmese mm. people, you can go on online. You can have the that information. But it is not totally end. But and then they have the something now. Mm. Stay some refugees coming. They are pipelines process. Yes. But and then some people will come. But I hope. The for the persons of concern, like they have mentioned, and then the other, the UNHCR has a special category. So like me, it means the people who need to special protect, mm. and that they were allowed to settle mm. down the other countries. I hope they do. People, mm. if we go back to Burma, people who will be persecuted, yeah. Yeah, they allow us to come here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, do you have any family there? Uh, only my brothers and sisters. Yeah. My, my two sons are here right. uh, after 2006. Are they in refugee camps or are they still My younger son was. Yeah. Now he, he already arrived here in 2006. Good. Okay. My eldest son, he came here together with me. I went to the jungle, as I mentioned, in 1988, Right. And then three years later, my eldest son followed into the jungle camp. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I, that was very that surprised, you know. You got a really war-torn country there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people that are being, it's like a dictatorship, isn't it? Like a tyranny or... Military dictatorship. Mili yes. Military dictatorship. So, um, are you uh, involved with any other organizations, the both of you here, in besides the Golden Moon and making that movie for Burma Soldier. Are you like multicultural? Mm. I was, uh, uh, before I, I work as an outreach specialist mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for the Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah. And then I have to involve in many uh, different organizations in, in the community. So I work together with Multicultural Council of Fort Wayne, mm -hmm. and then the St. Henry's Church, Right, oh. and then the the other other uh, community groups, NGOs. Right. So you know. Yes. So you're helping uh, the community as well as your own people who have moved here from Burma. Yes, including the people from Burma too. Especially, are they adapting? It's been several years since I had John Mitchell. I think it's a little settled down. When, yeah. You know what? But I am seeing is you know are when we still start more coming in. I think uh, it's very a very low number, right? Low very number. low number. Yeah. So how many are there? Do you know? A lot. Uh, you, uh, here. Now, how many Burmese populations in Fort Wayne? Mm -hmm. You mean the uh, the but and then we cannot say exact number. Right. But and then average. The the by guessing maybe there are around six thousand Burmese populations. That's Majority cool. of that are refugees people refugees population. Does it get really? I mean, the winter time. That really must bother them. D are they used to the cold weather? H when they originally come over, that must be rather much of a weather and culture shock. It's its adaptation process is very long. <laughs> you know, I never see the snow in my life before. <coughs> oh, my. So when I arrived here... That must have been rough. I, I, the first day, I fell on the on snow. You know, it was February 1994. Uh -oh. you know, and then the culture... The weather, the food, mm. everything is totally different. So we have to try to adapt this culture, this weather. Yeah. So the golden moon thing is helping to the kids, I mean, the people who, who are here to adapt as well. When the program started, the first two years, yeah. we invited those refugees to our talk show. Right. And then we share discussing, you know, what is going on, what, what we're supposed to do, how yeah. can we adapt. So we, we talk, we discuss, right. and we find the, some solutions. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. But do you still have the people on your show? Or? Only sometimes, you yeah. know. Uh, Golden Moon TV is a very independent program. We didn't s get support, any financial support from anybody. Mm. We use our own money, <laughs> <laughs> own money <laughs> until yeah. today. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we, s you know, we are, I'm working a full-time job. Yes. And then only Saturday and Sunday weekends, you know. Right. I can, I can do for the Golden Moon TV. So it's very, <coughs> how to say, less time to involve, to go to the community many times, you know, like before. So we did the talk show, 
And then the, but if there is a very important situation at the time, we call the people and then we, we discuss in our show. True, true, dear. Um, I have a question for you, <coughs> Mia. Yeah. Um, what do you do? I mean, you go on tour talking about your former country or what? What do you do? Now. Yeah, now. So the, the I, am, I have the you know, radio, I used to have the radio program, program you're broadcasting inside Burma, based oh on yeah. Washington, D.C., called right. Radio Free Asia. Oh. So I have the weekly program. I write the article myself and, you know, took the audio recording and send the MP3 file, they broadcast from the Washington, D.C. Oh. How long so is this it? So this is three years. This is based on political, politics. Oh, yes. So, and then I have the, my own website. Mm. I write the, the, you know, the articles and some, you know, the um, short story and essay based on politics. And then other than he, Tihai and I, and like the other Sambami people, we are not the elected SL, the representative of the Burmese community. But actually, we are working for the Burmese community as, right. you know, unelected representatives. Do you tour, go to places? Uh, yeah. So the, we are working as volunteer. Volunteer. Yeah, to provide and support to the Burmese people, especially the, we can set up the, you know, the, um, English for second language classes for the Burmese adults. Oh, good. Because and uh, without understanding the other people language, how you can how, how you can, can learn can their communicate. culture, communicate and, yeah, culture. and get a job and all that. Yeah. So Is and then the after now the last year I become the citizen of the United States. Hello. <laughs> Thank mm. you. So after that and then I told you everybody, okay, now and the people who arrive, Burmese people who arrive here around the two thousand six, seven, and eight. Right. Yeah, most of them become the, you know, the um, citizens of the United States. I told them, now you have the great opportunities, you know, that to elect the people who will govern you. Go and vote. True. I'm still a Canadian citizen, but, you know, yeah. I don't vote. So, no, because uh, now I'm 52. This is for the first time for me you know, to vote for the people who will govern me. We the people. <laughs> That's good. And um, did the people that you voted for, did they come in? Did they win? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm just making sure, you know. Uh, anyways, hmm, more questions. Have any of you gone back to Myanmar or Burma? Yes, since? I did. Last year I went Last back. Last year? Yes. Yeah. And you got, oh, you managed to get back. Yes, uh, I applied a visa to mm. the in my embassy. Mm -hmm. Then at first they told me, uh, don't buy an air ticket, and then they want my full biography. Oh. What I did right. after I left from my country. So because oh. he used to be like me, the <laughs> government, the <you know>, opposition. <laughs> so <laughs> so I have to write my b brief bibliography about what I did against that government, uh, the oh. government, and then after that they gave me a visa. So I went there, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't bother me anything. So I went back there, and then I came back here safely. How long were you there? About uh, over three weeks. My mother, she was 97 years old, Ooh. and my siblings to told me, if you have a chance, come back. I, they think a mother is waiting for you. Uh -huh. So I went down there. At first, my mother not recognized me. Well, how she long has it been? I l since 1988. Oh wow, it has been after 25 years. Yeah, after 25 years, 25 years, she not recognized me. A, a week oh. later, and then she started to recognize me. She asked my s my eldest son's name, and he, uh, she asked me how is he doing because after I left to the jungle, my mother raised up my son. Mm -hmm. Three years later, he followed me. <laughs> so, oh so I told her, yeah, your 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 grandson is okay, and then everything is smooth for him. He he's in the school. He almost graduate so she said okay and then she and then when I came back a month later she passed away oh mm. I'm sorry it's okay. mm. our condolences but, but at least you had a chance to see her yes at least and she had a chance to see you right mm. and then so. thanks for the what, military government about that you know mm. whatever I don't <laughs> like him on this part they allow us to come they didn't bother us Thank you very much. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. Will wonders ever cease? Yes, after 25 miracles, years. Miracles. Yes. Miracles. Um, 
Would you ever like to move back if things get better? Would you think things will get better? Yes, what I'm living is uh, I would like to participate to transform my country into the democratic country, Good. like the Good. international standards. You know, my country is one of the poorest country in the world, oh. even we have a very n rich natural resources. So if I have a chance to go back and to participate in developing my country, yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone in your country that's uh, still fighting for democracy? Yes, there are many people still struggling against the military government. It's not a military government. Samai. <laughs> you can say Samai because in the parliament, there are non elected 25% military personnel in the parliament. Mm. And then the winning party, a political party, are mostly by the ex-military generals. Mm -mm. So only NLD party is over 40 representatives and the other uh, democratic s side is very few percentage in, in the parliament. So the, Even in the government, cabinet, and then four of the key post cabinet members you know, come from army. Mm -hmm. they, oh. are, they are in the military uniform, oh like right. the State Department, like the, the uh, you know, sec Secretary of the Defense, and the Secretary of the Territory, Secretary of the Interior. All of these four guys are never elected by the people. They are military men. They, they like take themselves. the people. Mm. <laughs> How you can say this is a democratic government? Yeah, well, I don't <laughs> think so. This woman that came over uh, several years ago. On San Suu Kyi. Suu Kyi, is she still fighting for you? Yes, yeah, she was elected as a member of the Congress in the last year. Mm -hmm. But then uh, her body won the, um, the 43 seats in the um, Congress. Right. But in the majority of the um, personnel are the you know, former military men and mm -hmm. even the 25 percent of the, you know, the uh, military men, in-service men. So but then though you can say she was a elected person, but she cannot do anything because uh, she cannot, she is not able to come into power. But the, according to the 2008 Constitution, she never became of the presidents of the Burma. Oh my God. Without changing this, this 2008 Constitution, yeah. we cannot change our country into a democratic country. Sure. It's impossible. It's a key point. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't had a major upheaval to overthrow them. Well, uh, because they are retreating, what I'm seeing is, you know, yeah. I was a student activist since 1973. Mm -hmm. So the, the military is very powerful. Now today, they, they have to accept to rule the country mm -hmm. together, even we, we don't have real influence, but they are retreating. And then like recently, one of the independent uh, journalists was killed, oh. and then they have to open the case. Right. You know, they have to start investigation. It never happened before, like 50 years ago. Now, I mean, it's they have to open up and they are retreating. I totally believe one day our country will become a democratic country. Well, you know, high five. <laughs> and you too, my dear. <laughs> my goodness. Well, I'm so glad that you came on to my show, both of you. Me you and T earlier. Thank you. And uh, I have to have you back on my show again. Not, n not, uh, not as, uh, what do you call the word? I haven't talked to you for such a dog's age. I have to get m keep more in touch with you. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'll have you on again, maybe in a couple of months, about six months or something. Sure. See yes. how you're doing and all yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. you can do it. And, then, uh, and then I will invite you to <laughs> Golden Moon. <laughs> yes, have, for I our been program. <laughs> yes. <laughs> have I been on your show? Y yes, I will invite you. Yeah, okay, okay thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, and thank you, audience, for tuning in. And we hope to see you next week. And it was quite an enlightening uh, conversation we had today with Tia and Mio. So, bye bye. See you next week. God speed, my love.
So until.